Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video I wanted to talk about creating app icons in Blender. Over the past few days I've been building a Stream Deck app with a friend of mine. His channel is by the way in the video description. And now that the server side and the base app are mostly finished, it was time for some in-app icons. By the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. For a project like this, it is always good to start off with some reference. Because these icons were going to be used in a Stream Deck app, I firstly tried to replicate real-world Stream Deck buttons. As you can see, this didn't work out because the final rendering were too detailed and also the glass or plastic covering gave me some bad results. In the end, I also tried it with transparency, but from this point onward, it just didn't work at all. So in the end, I went with the style of the new Big Sur icons, which combine a clean design with 3D attributes, as you can see in the lighting and shadows. I of course added my own little touch, like the cutout and materials. Before I started the icons in Blender, I needed to get my hands on fitting SVG icons. For this task, I used Iconset, together with their free icon libraries. To get started making these icons, let's first of all delete everything and add in a ground plane. Let's also start with adding in a camera and with Alt R and G, clear out its rotation and location and then move it upwards so it sits above the plane. I went with a resolution of 1024 and set the camera to orthographic with a scale of 2. This way our plane is nicely framed. To get these rounded edges, you can just go into edit mode and with Ctrl B bevel your plane and with V set it to vertex mode only. Now we can adjust our bevel until we get a shape we like. To get a more 3D effect on this ground plane, I extruded it downwards and added a bevel modifier. Set it to angle and adjust the amount and segment. We can also right click and choose shade smooth. Awesome, now we have our ground plane. I still want this cut out, so for this let's add in a UV sphere and rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. This way we won't see artifacts with the angon faces right here in our ground plane. To flatten the cutout, I will flatten the sphere and move it downwards, just like this. And now with Ctrl and 3, I will give it a subdivision level of 3. We can also shade it smooth and hide it. And now after the bevel modifier, let's add in a boolean one and select our sphere. And you can see that this looks just horrible and this is because we need to enable auto smooth. And now all the shading artifacts are fixed. It is now time to import our SVG icon. So let's go to import SVG and select any icon we want. And I'll just go with this disconnect display option. The Blender SVG importer is quite good, but we still need to do some cleanup. First of all, with F3, let's search for set origin and choose the center of mass of the surface. And with Alt G, move it into place. In edit mode, we can adjust this placement further. We can also scale up the icon and delete its default material. Now, I want this icon to be extruded upwards and beveled, so we get a rounded shape. For this, we will need to convert it into a mesh. So, with Ctrl and A, let's choose Visual Geometry to Mesh. And in Edit Mode, we can now extrude it upwards, just like this. You can see that the geometry is really bad for it to bevel correctly. So let's select everything and choose Limited Dissolve. And now we can bevel our icon. You can still see that there are some strange artifacts. Let's Ctrl Z everything and have a look at our mesh. And you can see right here that something is wrong. So let's go ahead and see if we can fix it. I will first of all delete all these faces. And now I'm trying to delete these edges right here. And you can see that everything still works fine. And we can now select all of the bottom edges with Alt and fill them with F and do the same for the top faces. And if we try to bevel our object again, it works a lot better. Awesome. There are still some strange artifacts, but we can easily get rid of them using a remesh modifier applying the scale and if we set it to 0 0.005 and also enable smooth shading we get a pretty good looking icon okay now that we are done with all the modeling it is time for the lighting and materials okay for now i will start with the lighting and this is done with just some area lights so let's move one upwards and quickly go into cycles because i'll be rendering this icon in cycles 
And let's have a look at our light. This can be much stronger, so maybe set it to 400, just like this. And now for some extra detail, we can maybe duplicate it and get one on the side, just like this. But for these icons, I really don't want an advanced lighting setup, because the shadows should be kept pretty clean. And now we can end this icon off with materials. But first of all, let's set our world background to black. And under film, set the world to transparent. This way, when we render out our icon, these edges are actually transparent. Now let's give our base a new material. And let's add in a gradient texture. With Ctrl, Shift and click, we can preview it. Of course, you have to have the node wrangler add-on enabled. And with Ctrl, T, we can add in a mapping node. I want this gradient to go from top to bottom. So let's rotate it on 90 degrees on the Z axis and move it up on the X axis. We can now add in a color ramp and choose any two colors we like. And most of the time you actually get a pretty nice gradient. And now we can connect this color ramp to our base color input and have a look at our shader. You can see that we can't really see the indent and an easy fix for this is to just connect the base color to the subsurface color and set subsurface to 1. And now the cutout will be much more prominent. You can of course reduce this effect by reducing the subsurface factor. But I really like this effect so I will keep it at 1. You could give your main illustration some gradient material too, but I actually really enjoy this white in our scene. To render out this icon, I would suggest you to click denoising data right here. And once we have rendered out our icon, we can now use the denoise node and all of the according denoise outputs to correctly denoise our image. And there we have it, this is our final icon for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you also learned something. If you did, consider liking and subscribing and we will see each other in the next video next Saturday.